My name is Nick Vaughan and I work in corporate communications. I'm responsible for our intranet and I'm also the product owner for the development of our intranet solution. Hi, my name is Nello D'Andrea. Call me Nello. I'm a SharePoint developer working since 15 years in the SharePoint field. Back to you, Nicole. Thank you, Nello. So we work for La Mobiliere oldest insurance company in Switzerland with 6,400 employees and 80 general agencies. We insure every third household and every third company in Switzerland. In our IT department, some 600 specialists ensure the smooth running of our systems and modernize our core IT systems. We also developed our internet internally with our team two years ago. The favorite solution of our Corpcom, we will show you today, the real-time news. We had following challenge. How can we, as corporate communications, make sure our employees stay updated on important company news, especially in a large multilingual organization like ours here in Switzerland? We had three main objectives. Firstly, our colleagues can pick and choose the topics and languages they want to see on the internet homepage. Second, our publishing team can quickly create news in different languages and decide which news goes where. Important news can be pinned to the top. Last but not least, news should only be shown on the homepage in the same language as the rest of the content. We are happy with the great solution that Nello has implemented for us. He is now showing us how it works, how to use it, and how he has developed it. Next up, Matt and Fabu will show you how to deploy this solution. Enjoy the session, Nello. Thank you, Nicole, for your kind words. As, as a developer, implementing solution is just one part. You need good idea, clear requirements, and an awesome product owner like Nicole to guide you. It's the same when bringing solution into your organization. You will hear it afterwards. You need a strong SPO and uh, Azure engineering team to succeed. That's all about uh, having a team, a great team. Now let's talk about uh, our implementation. The original concept is from this SPFX Web Part repo. It was built by Franco Nu, and I think uh, the great Vesa did also contribute to this solution. I may remember a blog post which uh, guided me at the beginning. So if you need news with a custom customizable feed where you can tweak the UI or need near real time updates, you can start with our solution or use it as, as it is. Our solution uh, built on these IDs and adds more than feature like full multilingual support, news channel and user-based channel subscription, a very nice looking UI, and you can even publish sticky news. I will show that afterwards and which are shown prominently on the feed. So let's have a look, a quick look at the workflow. First, we have a publisher. The publisher create a news page or update a news page with metadata like channels, if it's a sticky news and publishing dates, for example. Then we have a logic app which pick up changes. It checks if the news was already published or if it's a new news and it does two things. The first one, it writes on a custom list, which will be displayed on the start page. And the second one, it writes on a message uh, to the Azure service bus queue. The service bus queue is just a bus. It's a data layer connecting uh, the logic app to the web app, and it forwards the message to the web app. The web app listens to the service bus and gets notified uh, instantly. It also works as a socket server, which enables a connection to the SPFX web part, which is on the start page, for example, of your intranet. That's how we have configured it on our intranet. And it get the event. It get the events and uh, forward it to the SPFX web part. When the web app sends a message, the SPFX web part reacts in two ways. So there is an attended mode. A user gets a visual hint and must interact with the feed to see what's new. 
it also show how many unread news do you have. And then you have the unattended mode. This is where the web app uh, the web part just update the news feed uh, quietly in the background and this is the tricky part i will show it uh, afterwards so now i will share my screen the web part which is implemented here installed on this uh, this page and you can see here this is uh, sticky news. So a sticky news is a news which is shown uh, prominently on the start page. And then we have here um, channel uh, selection, where the user can select. He can have uh, as much channels as he want, and he can also here uh, manage his, uh, his channel. So, so as just to list for this one, so if I want to, to look at, for example, uh, uh, a news, so is the title here and also the language because it's multilingual and the header, which is taken all from this list and also the, the image and various uh, additional fields. And then we have the second list, which is quite uh, easy. We have the subscriber, the user, and also the channel which the user has subscribed. So it's everything what this web part needs to uh, to uh, to function. So I've prepared the news here, and I will just do an update, and then go on the start page, and I just need to trigger. The logic app, you won't see it because I'm on an other machine, but we should here have, uh, so the whole workflow has, uh, has been done now from publishing to writing to the service bus, to the web app, coming to, the, to this uh, web part within a couple of seconds. And the user here, this is the attended mode, so he can update the page. And then you see here the news which was which I did push before is now on the feed. So now I will just go to the code and show you why the unattended mode is quite tricky. So a year ago I did have uh, I did get a call from on one of our publisher who told me that uh, every time that uh, she publishes a news, the whole SharePoint service went down. At the beginning, I didn't uh, believe it. And then uh, she insisted, we scheduled a call. And uh, uh, she, she could uh, really demo this feature. Uh, every time she did uh, publish a news, the whole SharePoint tenant went down. And it was clear that our workflow worked so well that our 5,000 to 10,000 uh, user connected did receive within a couple of milliseconds the, the request to read the list and reading the same list 5,000 times within a couple of milliseconds did produce this, uh, this behavior. So we have added this little method which uh, distribute the load across uh, uh, different parameter and it just here connect to the to the client and to the to the Azure service bus and if it receive an, an event then it forward the event to the SPFX web part as it is and the SPFX web part to the heavy lifting and so one year before we we went live I had a little voice in my head who told me, yeah, uh, are you sure uh, it will work in production? How do you set this, all these parameters here? What kind of ping interval, ping timeout is okay? What kind of, uh, of uh, web app do you need? Do you need uh, a little uh, offering or maybe some, some premium offering? And I did a little bit of research and find out that there is a great framework to load test, which is called uh, Artillery. And we have included here in a sample, which are available on GitHub in the development. You can, uh, there is a readme which explains everything, but I will uh, just showcase how, uh, 
uh, a run uh, does work. So the artillery uses a YAML file and it takes the socket uh, endpoint from the environment. As we have defined it here, the duration, you can define various phases. The duration of this phase is 1200 seconds, it's 20 minutes. It has uh, arrival rate of 10 clients per second, so which means 600 uh, clients per, uh, per minute, and it will run linearly to 20 clients, so it's 1,200 clients. Then you can define also the, the same parameter or different parameter if you want to, to test your backend server, and it will also uh, keep the connection for 10 minutes. So every client keep connected to the to the server for 10 minutes. So I just need to set the variable here and we'll copy that in my command shell. And then it's just easy as that. I can run the test here. And now I will just make my screen a little bit smaller and go to my backend server so you can see how this behave in the so i've started i'm here on the on my log stream here i have started my uh, my backend server and i'm showing here on the right part the log stream of my backend server and here i am starting now my test and then you will see that the console log is are uh, going to appear on the right side. So it's starting to connect and it's connecting 600 uh, uh, clients per, uh, can make this a little bit smaller here. So we have a better uh, view of that. So it's already here connected 200 clients. And you see here that we have, uh, it's a bit big. So we have 100 user created and we have no error. So I'm testing against uh, P1 V2 uh, SKU. So it means it's quite, uh, it's our production. Uh, it's not our production uh, backend, but it's uh, the same configuration as we have in production. So we can uh, handle uh, 10 to 15,000 connection with this connection, with this uh, setup, and we have no problem uh, uh, with performance on this one. So it, we have no uh, no error with this setup. It works uh, perfectly. So I'm done with the demo. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you. Excellent. Thank you both very, very much. Greatly appreciated. A lot of really cool stuff here. Um, I think you probably answered it based on the, the way the demo goes, but we had a question in here. I just wanted to see what was the, uh, if you could quickly give like a two sentence uh, reason for why would you do a custom web part and not do something like, you know, the standard out of the box or a PNP search web part? Um, yes. So also it, it's a, it's a SPFX React web part, which connects to the, to the backend server. And uh, we needed full control of the publishing and the custom uh, rendering of the of the news. So if we want to uh, publish a news, it should appear uh, because of financial regulation, it should appear within a minute. And if you want to unpublish a news, so we can terminate, for example, uh, we can put a publish uh, to date uh, in the, how do you say, in the past, and then it will disappear automatically from the feed. So that's some regulation which we have. We want to control the news feed completely, and we do not want to rely on search because there is some. Uh, yeah, you you can't uh, you can't control it. So yeah, that oh, makes complete sense. And I'd say those other offerings make sense where they make sense sometimes, right? Depends on your use case. And for your use case, this is a fantastic solution. Thank you so much for sharing.